On the one hand, I think making is a, it's a practical process of just doing stuff and creating an object, but at the same time, I think there's a rewarding feeling that comes from putting things together so you end up with something new. It didn't exist in the world before. I heard about it through my brother in Australia. He, he lives in Australia now because it's an Australian idea. I got involved because I do some voluntary work at Time and Talents. I heard the ship was starting up, I was interested in making things. I think the connection was through the Surrey Docks farm. Don't you know this book? Mm -hmm. No. Well, it was a few of them, I believe it or not. My brother in law really passed away, he was a fellow ship member. And I met Devon at the period of and got talked to Devon. The way we work probably has been drawn from both time and talents and the local level, yeah. from their collective expertise and experience in, in working with uh, community groups in different ways. The whole idea of this is of the shed is for people to bring stuff in and, and you know, do their own projects and, and do things. And they can treat it like the, the shed that they'd like to have at the bottom of their car. Yeah. They can do what they want on their own schedule, on their own Time. The piano stood. Office is here. Well, refurbishing tools so that we can send them to tools with a mission to send to needy people in Africa. It was something I found. I was a taxi driver for 30 years, and I found it on the street. So I took all the computer bits out. This is just strengthening, so it doesn't collapse when you sit on it. It'll be just about the right height to, to sit on. Uh, all I've got to do is actually learn to play the piano. I'm David Gauntlet. I wrote a book called Making is Connecting, which is all about how the power of making means that people not only get to put together ideas and materials to make a thing, but also they connect with other people. And also I think it's really important that as we make things, when you feel more like you're participating in the world, you're making stuff in the world instead of just being a consumer of stuff. And it's really satisfying making things with your own hands rather than just getting it and buying stuff. It's really good. Hello, you're Michael. Hello. Michael. Hi, I'm David. Hello, good to see you. Good to see you. Come in. Come in. We're really glad to Thank you. you. We start with sandwiches and fruit, and then, uh -huh. then we do some work. And we have a group of probably about 50 men and women uh -huh. on our registers now. A lathe. It was made a lathe. Yeah, and it was made out of an old sewing machine. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> If you don't even know what you want to make, well then, then I think we'd, we'd encourage you to you join in to fiddle about what's going on uh -huh. already uh -huh. and give you the time and space to think about uh -huh. yeah. what you want. These guys come together, it's a social space, they talk, they can talk about the thing they're doing, so it's a way of men getting the chance to communicate about stuff, because men like talking about stuff, and it's a chance to do that, and then at the same time they're making what are actually emotional bonds, relationships, a sense of community. This is a space which they can call their own, they can come yeah. in here and do whatever I do. Yeah. And even if they don't want to do anything, they can sit down, read the papers and yeah. talk about the topics of the day, you know? So, yeah, yeah, it works. It's hard to think about what you want to do mm. when you first arrive, and that's why we try and have projects that people can just jump in and uh -huh. help with uh -huh. right away. Uh -huh. And what we often find is very quickly people think, wait a minute, I do have something I'd yeah. like to bring in. Uh -huh. You can come for half an hour, or you can come for an hour, or uh -huh. you can come for the full quotation, but it's up to you, you know? It's very relaxed. Everyone's all right doing what they do. Long life, health, well-being, all of those things are really closely correlated with working on projects, having a thing which you can see from start through to finish. I'm just sort of semi-retired now and doing this work, so I thought, well, I've got a bit more spare time, so I'd like to make some things and improve my skills, basically. Yeah, it's an opportunity to work with different people and pass on some skills and to learn some skills. It's a a great way of older people uh, occupying your time instead of watching afternoon telly for the rest of your life. It's like an old man's youth club. Before I was a bit of a bodger, my idea and my skills were pretty poor. I used to go to B&Q and buy stuff but wasn't quite sure what paint I was buying or what sort of saw I needed or I sort of mess up cutting wood. So coming here gives you access not just to building your skills but also using tools that you couldn't use at home. You know, you're frightened when you retire of just fading away, you know, and you know, so spending the rest of your life watching afternoon telly. You haven't got any imagination. And so I wanted to do things. It's good because it enables me to meet a range of chaps and uh, uh, pass on some skills and maybe encourage them to have a, a more interesting life. It's lovely. I, I wouldn't have thought of doing this. <laughs>
be pleasant for this year. Actually, they are to get it, it's worth it. I've never done sewing in my life before, but that's one of the things about being here, you know, you learn things you've never done before. We live in a, a digital world where people are increasingly doing stuff on screens, and when you make stuff with your hands, physically putting things together, it's quite a different feeling, and it's a feeling we're maybe at risk of losing some of. And a space like the Rotherhive Shed really brings people together to do that stuff.